welcome back to the Village Bonfire for another episode of the Wild Sacred Journey podcast. A podcast not just for your mind, but for your body and spirit too. Here we don't just talk theory. Instead, we compassionately engage with our lived experiences and a wide variety of topics together, all to invite the question, in these times we find ourselves in, how do we be more human? Thank you for being here. May these conversations awaken, inspire, repair, and evolve something deep within each of us and serve the wild, tender aliveness of our personal and collective hearts. So welcome back to another episode of the Wild Sacred Journey podcast. So I'll light our candle, our village fire. Feeling that spark, inviting us to gather around and drop in. And so we'll take a couple of deep breaths, just in and out. Recently, I've been noticing how sometimes I like get too complicated when I'm feeling off and I'm like, oh, I should try this and I should try this and I should try this. And maybe I haven't tried this yet. And what's the next thing I need to try? And sometimes it's like, all right, what if I just sat and breathe mm-hmm. <laughs> for a few moments? Right. I'm like, oh yeah, back to the basics. Sometimes, sometimes simple is better. And so, yeah. So today Maybe we invite in some simplicity. We're actually recording this on a new moon too. So I notice I'm feeling a little raw, a little emotional, new moon in cancer. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Makes sense. Yeah. Mm. So all this isn't airing on the new moon in cancer. We are recording it on that. And so, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So on those days, it's like, oh, right. Simple. And so maybe if you're listening to this, not driving somewhere where you can close your eyes, maybe you just kind of imagine yourself stepping up and taking a seat by a fire. And as we do that, as we gather around the fire, naturally there's something magical that happens that it's like our breathing starts to relax a little. It's like we can let our energy and our body just kind of like lean back slightly so that it's like if our eyes are forward in our head, we can invite them back towards the back of our skull a little bit, letting the weight just settle. If our chest is forward, we can imagine the weight of our upper body just settling back towards our shoulder blades a little, inviting our shoulder blades down. As we come into the simplicity of presence, then we become more available for connection with ourself, with others, with the land, with our beyond human kin. Our ancestors. With the process of life, the emergent process of life happening around us, within us, between us. And so with deep gratitude for that process of life, we say thank you, thank you, thank you. And so, yeah, so welcome around the fire today. (laughs) So today I have with us Stella Udozer. And so Stella actually came to our fire through Amana, who was a guest from a few episodes back. And so Amana was like, oh, we should definitely talk to Stella. She has a really beautiful, powerful story, so much Mm. wisdom. (laughs) And I was like, oh, so I went and I looked at her website and I just love, there's a part on her website where Stella says, I capture the freedom and love that exists in every story. And I was like, Mm. oh yes, like there it is. And then another part too, where she says, I've got a camera and a spirit full of awe. (laughs) (laughs) 
And I love that. Like the spirit's full of awe. I'm like, those are my people. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. So, and so, yes. Yeah. So I'm super excited to have Stella here. Um, you know, and, and I noticed too, like a lot of her passion as I've kind of talked to her a little bit before we start in things is like freedom and sovereignty and embodiment and birth and, um, you know, and, and so many of those have become really like strangely hot topics mm -hmm. and very buzzwordy. And a lot of those words can mean a lot of different things to a lot of people. And so, yeah, so I'm really excited to have her here and to just explore what those mean for her and, and why she feels our stories matter. So, um, yeah, so welcome Stella. Thank you. And, uh, yeah, I'll read your bio. Um, Stella is yeah. a digital content creator and birth keeper backed out of Cincinnati, Ohio. She's the mother of two, Haven, and her bonus daughter, Layla. Her business, Freedom Birth Story, aims to capture the true essence of every story. She is passionate about telling stories of finding freedom in motherhood. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's always good when your bio makes you go, yeah. You're like, oh, yeah, I wrote that pretty well. <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome. Cool. I know it's funny when I was on Amana's podcast at one point, she, you know, she was reading my bio and I was like, oh man, that's too long. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, like I, I could go on. I could. <laughs> it's really hard to distill that down sometimes into something that like, yeah, feels yeah. still feels impactful and like it encompasses like sort of this like whole tapestry that is each one of us and yet mm -hmm. is like also concise enough that it makes sense to somebody yeah right right <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. so awesome so I like to start with sort of inviting um guests yeah in w to share like how would you like to introduce yourself kind of beyond you know yours wasn't so much in kind of sort of the professional realm of like certifications and this and that yours mm -hmm. was a little bit more about who you are but yeah is yeah. there anything else you want to share about sort of kin ancestry place or like anything about the forces that shaped you yeah sure yeah definitely um so my lineage is Nigerian um as far as I know I don't know of any other um that that makes up my blood any other regions around the world but yeah my I'm a first generation here in the United States and so my mom and dad were both born and raised in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And um, that, I mean, that has shaped me in more ways than one. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, you can only, I don't I wouldn't even know where to start <laughs> in that realm. <laughs> uh -huh. um, but I, it, it's interesting because I kind of, my background, I, I, I'm feeling like I should go in kind of a spirit world route. Mm. Um, both my parents are Catholic. So I grew up in the Catholic church and which is very common in Nigeria. It's a very dominant religion in Nigeria. Um, and so I grew up going to Catholic school and always learning about the spirit world from the lens of Christianity. Mm -hmm. And um, that also has shaped me in, in many ways. So being like from a Nigerian family, very rooted in our culture um, but then also a little bit more, I would say a little bit more liberal. My mom was just a little bit more liberal than mm. um, a, a lot of what you find from, you know, first generation um, parents. Mm. And then also with the lens of Catholicism, um, I've always been understanding or have had a knowing of the spirit world. Mm. Um, I guess I would say that origin is now I've, I've kind of um, deconstructed a little bit from from that framework. However, it's still very much a part of my identity of just like knowing that there's a world beyond this one. And mm. it's, it's way more massive and encompassing. And it's, it's kind of, I feel is what has led us all here. And mm. there are those who came before us who are still around and manifesting themselves again and again and again and again and again in other forms, our ancestors, whether they come mm -hmm. back here in physical or are in the spirit realm. I mean, kind of both, right? I just feel like it's so it's so beyond our very carnal understanding. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, and you know, in Nigerian culture, it, 
is very spiritual. Like our language, I, I come from an Igbo background. It's one of the tribes. Mm-hmm. And um, it's one of the more dominant tribes in Nigeria. And like the whole language is spiritual. Like you can't get away with not incorporating God Mm. or source or however you name it into what you're talking about because it's baked into our very language. Mm. And so, yeah, I think um, that that is a huge part of who I am and and where I get this kind of concept of freedom from, I feel like, Mm. Um, because I, I feel like as as I've broken free from a lot of like more like religious um, constructs, I also feel a lot of freedom from like this really worldly, like kind of, can I cuss? Mm-hmm. Yeah, go <laughs> for it. Fucked up world that we're living in, right? <laughs> like, like where everything is like oh, a little off. Like I can, I can find the, 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 I can exist in that in between, which I, yeah. I really value. So yeah. Yeah. A little bit. Because, hmm. because you know, as as much as the physical, there's a lot of weird stuff going on. It is who we are, and there's so much, so much, so much wisdom and love and light to um, find hmm. in the, our existence as human, as animals, as primal. You know? Yeah, so. I love that. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I was having a conversation with a woman recently about yeah, joyful living, and you know, and and it's. <clears throat> I noticed how much in the last couple of years, I've really, you know, I felt like I was challenging myself to sort of, or I don't even know if I was challenging myself. I don't know if that's the right word, but hmm, I think what it is, is almost like sometimes, like, I feel like a lot of the wellness and spiritual world has gotten so love and light that there like, isn't a lot of acknowledgement of the shadow. Mm -hmm. And I feel like sometimes when I feel stuff like that, I find myself almost like swinging too far the other direction that like in this like weird non-rational hope that like somehow I can help balance that out you know right, right, right. so everyone's like love and light and I'm like but their shadow <laughs> you know <laughs> and then I'm like looking at my own life and I'm going like okay but like this is not healthy or happy for me to mm-hmm. be like the the like advocate for the shadow all the time because yeah there is like we need we need that joy too. And we need that love and we need that balance of what it is to be human. And so, yeah, I've been sort of challenging myself a little bit recently to be like, okay, let's focus a little bit more on what is working and let's focus a little bit more. You know, it is, but it's always both and, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's this, yeah, I think it it is helpful to, yeah, find that balance because I mean, for many reasons, right? But, but yeah, I I totally hear you. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I loved what you were saying too. I mean, that piece about language and, and, um, you know, it's interesting. I remember when I was first sort of starting to learn to work more with the subtle body and the energy fields and sort of more intuitive or psychic, whatever we want to call it, like gifts. Right. And I remember my teachers were sort of encouraging us to start a journal or some sort of where we could draw or write or somehow start to like tap into our language of symbolism. So we like Mm -hmm. learned what our particular language was because the energies Mm -hmm. speak to us through like our, you know, they're going to speak to us in a language that hopefully we will understand. And so whether it's the religion that we were raised in. And so that's like part of how we, you know, how those energies come through for us, because like, that's the language that we're familiar with, Mm -hmm. or whether it's, as you were saying, baked into, um, your ego, right? Is that what yeah. you said? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Your, your mm-hmm. language in there, you know, and um, yeah. And it, it yeah. So it, it, I don't know, hearing you say that kind of got me thinking about, yeah, the different ways that we each sort of have our different access points. And yeah, even if like the system or the structure that has kind of solidified around a particular language isn't like maybe feeding freedom or isn't to fully feeding whatever, you know, whatever it is that, that, yeah, that it doesn't mean that that isn't part of how we can still access this, like beyond humanness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 That's a knowing that has been kind of developing in me recently, because I feel like when I kind of started the whole deconstruction process, I wanted to go so far away. Like I was just like Mm -hmm. kind of bitter towards 
a lot mm-hmm. of the things that I've been taught and I feel like have hindered me in my, uh, not have hindered me, but have tend to kind of have a hold on people mm-hmm. that I no longer see as true. I was kind of bitter. Like I've learned all this stuff and like, is it even like, I haven't been believing lies my whole life and like kind of mm-hmm. go like the extreme, but mm-hmm. then I feel like now, you know, spirit is bringing me back to that, that beautiful gray area where it's like, no, there are so many, so many valuable things that I know mm-hmm. now, like these things shaped me as a person. And I, and I have a certain type of moral compass and I have a certain type of way of being that could have come in other ways. Like I don't need, I didn't need a religious background to have those, but they came in that way. Mm-hmm. And, and I value them and I love who I am because of like a lot of that fabric. So mm-hmm. I don't need to be like the extreme other end, mm-hmm. you know, I can find, yeah, myself in that, in that, in that liminal space and like, and like, just be happy that that's mm-hmm. where we are and that's where we've come and we're going so many other places, you know, yeah. uh, you know, as long as we're here and beyond. So, yeah, it feels like when we're first starting to kind of learn discernment and like mm-hmm. individuation, it happens like, so like, it's like, we need so much like force to get us out of inertia or something, or to like break us free that it's like, yeah, we do it in with such a, uh, like often a forceful rejection energy, mm. right? And then, yeah, it's like pendulums over here. And then we like swing ourselves over here. And then hopefully we kind of find our way back to, to the middle. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, mm. Yeah. I mean, and that's as, as you're sort of sharing about that and kind of within this context of like, yeah, the forces that shaped you, you know, I'm thinking too about sort of, yeah, your, your sort of stance that, yeah, everybody's story matters. And so I guess to me, it feels like there's a connection between like our stories and, and what we have to share in the world, whether we call it story, whether we call it medicine, you know, whatever we want to call it. And then like, our particular alchemical blend of these forces that shaped us. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. Yeah. What is your, but what, yeah. What's your, um, yeah. What kind of brings you to that place that knowing that everybody's story matters and what does that like mean or look like for you? Yeah. Um, yeah. It's so interesting because I guess since I don't know why this is, you know, kind of going in this direction, but on a spirit lens, I, um, I've been in a lot of like circles that are really charismatic and all about like hearing from the spirit world, hearing from the Holy Spirit and all of this. And I, one time was at a conference many years ago where I was on the floor, like in worship. And I very, very clearly heard tell the stories of my people and I kind of like, it kind of like jumped into my head, like, whoa, this, that was not me, you know, like, where did that come from? <laughs> and thus began, I feel, and it was already kind of shaping up in my life, but thus began, I feel like that calling into storytelling and that calling into um, being intentional of, around how I tell my own story. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, I you kind of, you kind of, mentioned medicine and like I really really believe story is medicine Mm -hmm. like I was a video producer at a a big mega church for two years or three years um and I was hired to literally find people's stories and Mm -hmm. like turn them into video interviews like um and like really you know beautifully produced videos And I just like, it was right after hearing this message about tell the stories of my people. And then all of a sudden Mm -hmm. I'm like the storyteller at a play, you know? Mm -hmm. And then from there, I've just like continued to do it and like, you know, in different forms, different ways. Like now I'm working in the social media realm, but I still am always trying to find ways to to tell the story. Cause I mean, even on a secular level, like marketing is all about, Mm -hmm we we understand things in story mm-hmm, we mm-hmm. we we relate to story we see ourselves in other people's stories and that's how I feel can be most um the best teacher for people and then the medicine behind it I feel is when you do see yourself in someone else's story or you do mm-hmm. tell your own story and like pieces are coming together as you're telling your story there's so much healing 
that mm-hmm. takes place. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, whether sometimes it's physical healing where you start crying because you have this release and you didn't realize it was in you until you told, you said it out loud. You mm-hmm. said your story, you said the thing out loud that made that um, energy center unlock in your body. And now there's tears coming down or you're laughing mm-hmm. or whatever. It's like everything about telling story is, is life. Like it brings mm-hmm. us to life. It, 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 it Tales, the story of life and I just think that um yeah I it's shaping in different ways in my life and now mm-hmm. like I have kind of been led down a path where I'm now like exploring and studying birth and because it all starts there like it all starts at mm-hmm. that seed that's planted mm-hmm. like that's where the story is starting if we have, I mean, it starts way before there, right? If you, in my head, <laughs> we yeah. can get really ethereal yeah. deep right now, but like, we don't need to do all that. But if we're talking about this, <laughs> this existence right now, this uh-huh. life, like it starts there and um, yeah, yeah. So it's kind of spiraled into like the story of motherhood and the story mm. of like birth and life and everything that it starts. Um, I actually just learned a mantra yesterday. I can't remember the actual um words but you know you kind of like tap your fingers Mm -hmm. and it's birth life death rebirth birth Mm -hmm. life death rebirth and I can't Mm -hmm. remember exactly what the like mala something it's a mantra yeah 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 yeah. and that's all that it is right it's birth life death rebirth and it's just a cycle that keeps happening Mm -hmm. and um yeah, that's where that's where I am now, and like just exploring what does that look like, and it's led to you know there's video, there's been literal storytelling, and then also photography that um has been a, a, in poetry that have been kind of mediums mm-hmm. to, to which I am storytelling, and yeah, <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, I love that. that. Yeah, for me, it feels like storytelling is so much about. <clears throat> connection to, mm-hmm. you know, and especially just now when you were kind of, I, I love that, the like connecting in with that cycle of life, that karmic mm-hmm. cycle of that like yeah. bigger cycle too. Um, it like it context story, like has the power to contextualize things mm-hmm. like in oral societies, it's like partly how information has passed because it's easier to remember, you know, exactly. or, you know, or at least back when more societies were oral, um, But it's also, you know, I've heard people talk to the difference between like what was lost in storytelling when we started writing it down, you know, and part of what was lost was that direct connection with the listener, Mm. you know, and, Mm -hmm. and sort of also a little bit of that, like fluidity, like the ability to kind of have things morph and shift, you know, and grow. I mean, that, that stories story as a living process in the same way that any other biological ecological process happens you know Mm. and you know I was thinking too as you were sort of giving some of the examples of stories yeah like how much too it like helps us put pieces of things together but then it's like sometimes too we get mirrored you know like I had this story for a while that like, I wasn't a seafood person. I mean, this is a very silly (laughs) example, but like, and I was out at a restaurant one time with a friend and we were in Providence, Rhode Island. And so seafood was everywhere. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, well, I just don't know if I'm a seafood person. I was like, but I mean, I like crab and I like lobster and I like shrimp and I like scallops (laughs) and I like salmon and like, I like tuna. I'm like listing all these things. Yeah, exactly. And my friend was like, I think you need to stop thinking of yourself as a not seafood person. (laughs) You sound like a seafood person to me. And like, so it's a silly example, but it is, it's like, yeah. we tell ourselves, yeah. we form these stories mm-hmm. about ourselves, you know, or we interpreted something someone said in a way that causes us to form a story about ourselves mm-hmm. or whatever it might be, you know, or someone r- literally gave us a story about ourselves that like, wasn't true to us oh, yeah. or something. And yeah. And it's like, you know, and so that's some of it too, right? Like we don't have to write those stories in like stone and then live with them forever. You know, we can tell them and we can then have people mirror back to us. Well, like, that's not how I perceive right. you, you know? Right. And there's or the like, healing, right? And you know, when you, when you 
yeah, when you start to understand that you're believing lies, like the story mm-hmm. that you're believing is not the truth. And it's interesting that you're talking about the difference between Oracle, just like strictly Oracle and then writing things down because yeah, so much can get lost in translation with writing mm-hmm. things down. And that's literally what has happened through all of history. And there's so much contortion because what we have written down is not the full truth mm-hmm. in so many cultures all around the world. And I'm even thinking thinking in the in the context of lineage and you know being of the African diaspora, African people, black people are orators. We tell like story is so engraved in every single African or black um or I guess African lineage culture. Mm-hmm. And you also can see sometimes how that creates um some tension there because a lot of things weren't written down in in Mm -hmm. African history Mm -hmm. and because of that now you have you know a lot of African-American people who are not connected to the lineage that they come from for obvious reasons right Mm -hmm. and and because there's not a lot of written down literature and Mm -hmm. and and Mm -hmm. folk tales and all you know pro like all the African proverbs all this stuff has not been handed to people It is Mm -hmm. written down in some ways, right? But it's just not as vast because Mm -hmm. we're such oracle story storytellers. Mm -hmm. Um, And that orated word can also get kind of discombobulated and reframed and all all sorts Mm -hmm. of things if it's not written down, right? So it's so nuanced to where Mm -hmm. it's like, there's so much good that comes out of the the spoken word and like the, the truth can exist in the spoken word so much more vastly I feel than than written down word but then you you run into that tension too where it's like if you don't write down your history someone else will write it for you mm-hmm. and they can easily can dis, 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 distort it and I think that's mm-hmm. what's happened in history mm-hmm. and why there's been so much pain and confusion and lies told to people that um make make it seem make things seem as though they're something that they're not <laughs> mm-hmm, <laughs> if that mm-hmm. makes sense so yeah mm-hmm. anyway yeah that could go down a long rabbit trail right? I know but like, I know but... <laughs> yeah well and I mean even just yeah I mean it's like we need again it's that both and right? right like yeah there's benefits to writing and there's benefits to oral you know I mean I know some of the people we're talking about once it's written that text can travel anywhere mm-hmm. and the interpretation becomes entirely the reader's Right. Because the story itself is disconnected from the land where it came from, yeah. and like the roots and the context and, and the, the time language. and the place and the language. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. it becomes, so it becomes this, it's like part of what's fed into, I think our collective, like, yeah, our collective idea of like almost that toxic individualism, right. Of mm-hmm. like my interpretation, my truth, my, this, my, that, you know, right. and it's like, I mean, there's something about that switch from oral to written and Mm -hmm. that written is somehow quote unquote better and more civilized and more enlightened and like whatever, right. Than like oral that, yeah, that we lost something in that. Mm -hmm. And and we ended up in sort of these, you know, some of these isolated pockets of like, I sit down and I read and that's great. And, you know, (laughs) yeah, like, well, I find that so much. And that was part of my, what I've gone through with this whole deconstruction. Like I've, I, I, I think I was, I mean, there has been many times where I'm just seeing arguments about interpretation. Mm. You know, we can talk specifically just in this context about the, about the Bible is where I, I started to be like, Hmm, everyone is seeing this very differently. Mm -hmm. And for one example, like as I'm starting to understand and get to know God, as a mother figure in my Mm. life I've always Mm. been taught God the father right and then now I'm learning about God the mother and I saw a text that said you know actually the 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 Aramaic that Jesus may have spoken the word used for God was abum and Mm. that word translates to ab ab is abba father and then wound w-o-o-n is womb mother Mm. and so this this historical figure that all these people are saying came down and said that he was god and that he spoke to the father and he was one with the father was actually saying like hey god is 
father, mother, all creator, all things in, in, in this God exists in all of us. Hmm. And that's my interpretation, right? I can't mm-hmm. say that's correct, mm-hmm. but now mm-hmm. that's how I'm seeing it. And, and so you have like this, this, this culture, like Eastern cultures were so, they understood learning in a more cyclical nature, which is more matriarchal nature where it's not linear. It's not this equals that it's this equals that, 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 because of that, 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 you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so they would write the scripture, discuss the scripture, talk to each other and like come to whatever, you know, wherever they came to. And that's how a lot of these cultures dissected, you know, holy word and, Mm. and all Mm. this. And now we somehow got into this patriarchal society where there's someone, you know, elevated that is telling us what we should think and what we should believe. And if you don't get behind that, you're going to burn in hell for the rest of your Mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, how did that get so twisted? Mm -hmm. (laughs) I'm aware aware too, as you're speaking. Yeah. It's like, we've moved from questions to answers. Yeah. Right. It's like, we don't know shit. Right. (laughs) Right. And in fact, some of the, you know, I, I believe, you know, in, in different, I think in Hebrew, but like, I I'm guessing in other languages too, a lot of times the word that people use for God is sort of also hinted at like the unnameable mm-hmm. one, you know, right. with this idea of like, we're trying to put a name on it so that we can all talk about it. And like, all know that we're talking about the same thing, you know, like mm-hmm. have conversations around it, but like, really it's so much bigger and cannot be named, you know, exactly. And all encompassing. Yeah. Ebo is very similar. Like the word, there's several words used to kind of attribute to this, the source. Right. Mm. And one of them, Chukwu, which is in like almost every name, lots of names. I won't mm. say every, almost every, but it's, it's in different forms and a lot of people's names where they attach on God and the God mm. that we're speaking of is not like this. It's not, an, it, you know, like this entity. It's like mm. the entity, like all that exists is mm. all encompassing source of life, you know? And, mm. and we, we are robbed by like, by like the way we interpret God to like box it in, mm-hmm. in a way that our human minds can understand, mm-hmm. but we're, we're robbed of like the true essence. I think when we do that, because yeah, we, we start to personify yeah. something that is not a person. <laughs> right. Right. Well, I love that too. The idea, yeah, of putting God in the names or like greeting that, like as a reminder to greet each person as Mm -hmm. a piece of God. And it's like, what would change? And this is something I've been sitting with personally myself too, is like challenging myself to get even better at like, yeah, like seeing people as some like everybody and everything I encounter as a Mm -hmm. manifestation of God, you know? And that's, I think the beauty too, in some of these sort of pantheistic traditions Mm -hmm. and cultures um, that have all these different, you know, it's not necessarily that. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I, like, I can't speak for people who, who specifically follow those and how they conceive of it. But for me, it points to the fact that, yeah, it's like, way too big spirit source god whatever universal frequency whatever we want to call it like love you know whatever we want to call it it is like mm-hmm. way too big and so it's like but it has all these different tones pieces, and these yeah. different pieces and yeah. if each has like a slightly different feeling to it or like invites us into a slightly different relationship or understanding of it and so it's like mm-hmm. when we name those and give those like a some sort of sense of something it's like yeah we can't get the whole picture but we can start to piece it together yeah this, and we like, can like meditate on those certain attributes like whether it's the god of uh you know of love or you're saying like the god of finding things and then you mm-hmm. pray to this god of finding things like you're you're you're, you're just praying to i think you know yeah kind of the way i agree with you it's like you're using something that's so vast and kind of getting a little microdose of that thing and just focusing on the end on that thing. And then you'll see that a lot of the times it manifests into something like my mom is super Catholic. Right. And so she would, whenever she was always losing something. And so whenever she would lose something, she would pray to, I think it's St. Andrew. 
mm-hmm. one of the saints, mm-hmm. right? And so um, she's praying to St. Andrew, but what she's really doing is manifesting that, like, I will find this, I will find this, uh-huh. I will find this, right? And then she finds the thing. And she's like, oh, thank you, St. Andrew. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Isn't St. Anthony one of the saints? And uh-huh. that actually kind of goes into something else that's been kind of coming up for me a lot is, like, ancestral work. And I really think that it's it's something that I'm like, okay, like hearing the call now that I need, I can step into deeper and me and Amani kind of talked about this too, is like, um, so like in Catholicism, you're given all these saints that you can pray to and the majority of them are white men or maybe some women and they come from Eurocentric communities mm-hmm. and they were very spiritual people on earth that did beautiful things and a council decided that they are now worthy of being saints Mm -hmm. and we can pray to those saints. And then the same people will say like, but if you pray to your ancestors, that's evil, that's witchcraft. Mm -hmm. But I can pray to your ancestors. Like I can pray to this, (laughs) the ancestors, these ancestors of the Olivia's I don't have anything to do with. And like, and I think it kind of traps people. Like I see it all the time within my culture of people who are so trapped within a certain framework and they're given all these rules and regulations and it kind of limits the power that we have and the access that we have to the spirit realm of mm. all of these people who know us and love us and who've been following us since we were conceived and guiding us. We don't mm. even know how to speak to them. We don't even, we think it's evil to speak to them. We think mm-hmm. it's, you know, you know, it's, it's literally counter to God to access our people mm. and like that come on <laughs> like oh, like so I'm unlearning a lot of these things but I'm also like so excited that like oh yeah like actually this is this is meant for us it's 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 actually a mode of um like um su- of oppression to mm-hmm. take that mm-hmm. away from people mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and yeah and that's you oppress people enough you have power over them yeah Well, it feels like for me in those moments, it feels like it's keeping me focused on something being outside of myself, either having the answer or having the saving grace or having the whatever, right? Because Mm -hmm. it's like when I'm, and like, yes, I believe in mythical ancestors too, but you know, if, if all I'm allowed to pray to is these very specific mythical ancestors and someone tells me what they stand for and what they each represent and like how I'm supposed to connect with them. And there's no room for me to develop my own relationship with them or to find out which ones want to work with me or connect with me because they just organically start showing up in my life in ways that I start to be like, oh, oh, interesting that one, you know, Mm -hmm. or yeah, maybe I want to connect more with the mythical ancestors that were like pre-Catholic, you know, I've been connecting a lot with some of my Irish lineage recently and doing a lot with, yeah, the mythical ancestors of that, that were you know, and the pre-Christian ones, you know, right, <laughs> like, right, right. like early so cool. Irish society ones. And then, you know, and then, so there's the mythical ancestors. Mm-hmm. Yes. And then like you're saying, there's also like our family tree ancestors and lineage and like, yeah, there's a lot of, I mean, at least in my lines, there's a lot of wounding. I think most people mm-hmm. in modern society have that right at this point, but there's also so much wisdom and like so many gifts and yeah. You know, and for me, it feels like when I start to connect with those, my like family tree ancestry, and even actually my mythical ancestry, because those are rooted more in place than in like sort of this like sky god kind of pantheon that I feel like we sort of have in a lot of Christian Catholic kind of world it feels much more like it's kind of it's up it's all up there yeah (laughs) the saints everybody they're all up there and when Mm -hmm. you pray you're praying up you know Mm -hmm. and so whether it's like mythical ancestors that are rooted in the land like a lot Mm. of the early Irish ones or whether it's my family lineage ancestry like when I connect with them or pray to them or whatever be in conversation with them whatever that looks like it's like I feel it in my bones and blood and DNA. And then it feels like it's here and now, you Mm -hmm. know, and when Mm. we're in our bodies and we're connected to the (laughs) land, we, we, yeah, we're not as easy to oppress actually. I mean, that's part of the reason when, when powers go in to colonize a place, one of the first things they try and do is take people's land away. Uh Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Change the belief and disconnect people from the land. And those things happen concurrently because 
those are the the pieces, you know, language, beliefs, like cosmology, and then land, and land. you know, and those are the right. things that give people culture and identity. And well, you roots. just said it was mind, body, spirit. Yeah. <laughs> so take, over, take over their mind, their body, their spirit, and then, yeah. and then, and then you're then, like, yeah. And then you're disconnected and you're easily conquest. swayed by charisma <laughs> and you're uh-huh. easily right. Exactly. And, yeah. and suddenly you have trouble finding the power within you and you have mm-hmm. to look outwardly for the power and you're yeah. right for someone to be like, here, here's <laughs> what you need to believe. Here's what you, you know. Yeah. And um, out of like this fear that if you don't believe this, there are consequences, right. very serious consequences. Right. You know, in like, the physical AKA, world as well as the spiritual. Exactly. You're going to be <laughs> miserable here. Then you're going to burn for the rest of your life there. And yeah, yeah like, mm. it, you know, and I, I see that there's so much love. I mean, God is still in all of these spaces, right? So mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. obviously there's going to be so much love that will, I think light always will triumph over the dark, right? So there's going to be, even within these systems that might have a lot of things that are uh, corrupted, there's going to be so much good that can come out of these systems mm-hmm. because there's still humanity. There's still love. There's still light. And, and mm-hmm. they're focusing, meditating always on spirit. So there's so much activism and um, charity and, and good things mm-hmm. that come out of these systems. And they're always, and there will be so long as there is, you know, light and people mm-hmm. operating these systems. Mm-hmm. But then, yeah, you have a lot of, a lot of um, people who don't recognize how powerful they truly are because mm-hmm. all that power is being attributed externally. Mm-hmm. And yeah, you're, we're, we're not, we're disembodied in that, in that way. We're not understanding the power within and, and that's huge. That's yeah. huge. And it's kind of, it kind of led me to this whole world that I didn't even know existed where we're like talking about free birth and mm-hmm. not being a part of a lot of these systems and be it the medical system, education systems. And I still like, I'm very nuanced. Like I'm not a radical person myself, like personally. So I think there's something to take from almost everything, whether it's academia or like the jungle, like <laughs> there's something to take from it all. And mm-hmm. like, like right it all comes back to balance but then like at the same time I feel like I when I was so disembodied I couldn't discern like what to take from Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. these different worlds Mm -hmm. and so uh, like sovereignty autonomy didn't really wasn't really in my existence and I didn't even realize that because I was so much operating under systems that were Mm. handed to me Mm. rather than saying like wait actually what do I think about this like what do Mm. I actually think about this like what do I actually want like me in this body right now in this existence like what do I actually want and that's the healing that we can do for so many of our ancestors with so many of our ancestors because I I've started (laughs) my baby I don't know if you can hear it screaming (laughs) but um (laughs) I started to like try to pray to the healed, my healed ancestors. And I really do think like in spirit, like when we cross over, that's when it happens. Like the healing happens and you mm-hmm. start, you know, like I've read books about, you know, near death experiences and stuff like that. Cause I think it's so interesting. And like mm-hmm. one guy described it as when he went to the other realm, it, the, the book is called proof of heaven. Mm-hmm. And he felt as though, instantly while he's in this orb transporting from this world to the next every question that he ever had about anything in his head was being answered with love Hmm. with so much love and grace and enlightenment and Hmm. that like vision of how he like wrote it out and painted it out like whether that's how it's going to happen for everyone or not was so beautiful to me because I'm like yeah that's enlightenment right when we die and we can access that here on earth like Hmm whether there's so many different cultures and religions saying it in different ways, right? Like the kingdom of God here on earth or Mm -hmm. enlightenment here, or, you know, um, Nirvana, all these things, it's just all the same concept of like fully knowing that everything is okay. Like getting all the answers, like getting all of the revelation, it's going to happen and it can happen now, like in this existence. And like, like that is for me, 
the ancestors that I'm praying to, those who have received mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. fully. Mm-hmm. Like I think yeah. of my mom, she died two years ago. Mm-hmm. And, you know, she's the most amazing person ever here on earth. Like everyone loved her. Not that in the same, you know, breath, she had a lot of worries and a lot of horrible things that happened to her in this existence, in this life, and a lot of pain. Mm-hmm. And so for, I decided to have my, my firstborn here at the house and like without any medical intervention whatsoever. And my mom was a medical doctor. <laughs> so if she, had she been like here on this plane, that would have been a whole other story. Like I would have had a hard time trying to like settle her worries, but because she's like her fully enlightened self in the mm-hmm. next life, she was here the whole time super present super Mm. happy love light I felt her here like I felt her not worried here Mm. and Mm. like whoa the difference you know like like anyway yeah (laughs) Yeah, it's just so cool I think that for me is like part of I mean I love you know we were sort of starting by saying yeah "Yeah, that that um when we you know, even within these systems that might be causing harm now in many ways, or that, you know, aren't offering freedom in a lot of ways, right? Like there's still humanity and there's still good stuff. And like, I think for me, that's like part of why I've been asking a lot of this, this question a lot on like the podcast recently, because it's something I've been sitting with, like, why am I looking back? Like, why am I reaching back for these ancestral lineage things? And why am I, you know, and for me, it's like, because I know in my work that it's hurt people who hurt people. Right. And so like before someone went out to colonize somebody else, there was something that had hurt them, whether it was a lack of resources, whether, you know, whatever it was, right. Cause violence and, you know, um, you know, smaller groups of people fighting with other groups of people for access to resources and whatever has like been here since the beginning of time, mm-hmm. or at least the beginning of humanity anyway. Right. Um, and so you know, it's not like any of that's new, but there is, there's a fear, there's a worry, there's a hurt, there's a lack, there's a wound that causes people Mm -hmm. to go out, right? Because if we were really in our own humanity, we could not actually hurt somebody else because if we're truly in our humanity, then we see other people as being truly in their humanity. And then like, we can't hurt, you know? And so I think, so for me, it's like, yeah, if we can pray to the healed ancestors, or if we can go back like okay where were those moments in catholicism when someone chose to interpret the bible in a way where god was a male and where mary magdalene became a prostitute and Mm -hmm. you know like all of these things right like yeah like if we can go back to those moments you know or what did my ancestors believe before you know Catholicism came, right? Like what were their land-based animistic indigenous mm. beliefs? And like, what, you know, we were all indigenous at one point, right? <laughs> right. Like, exactly. And like, if we can go back to those moments and again, not to make anything wrong, but because it's like, if we can trace the stories back and we can find where they morphed, we can then make a more conscious choice about, okay, what makes sense in this here and now? Like, how do I want to interpret these stories here and now and how, what kind of relationship do I want to have with these things here and now? And like people were doing the best they could at that time with what they had and like no better, do better, you know, you know, someone at one point thought that that was a good idea that inter whatever the interpretation was or the change was or whatever. And like, now we can look back and be like, oh, wow. But maybe that change led to this and this and this and this. And like, was that good? (laughs) Maybe not, you know? And um, yeah, yeah. so, I mean, I love what you're saying there about, yeah, how we can choose that enlightenment now, how we can find those, those, you know, and, and we can, we have help in that with our ancestors who have been in this lifetime, you know, cause I heard that someone said that one time too, that, you know, it's actually hard sometimes actually asking our like spirit guides for help. If, you know, if we want to call them that right, the more spiritual consciousnesses that we kind of can connect with and ask for guidance because they can offer us something, but they, um, they haven't been here in this lifetime in these bodies necessarily they aren't they don't have to deal with gravity they don't have Mm -hmm. to deal with you know of course they can be loving and abundant right because they've never had to deal with finite matter and resources and like 
you know, in a way that we do, you know, and mm-hmm. I was reading about that particularly, I think it was like in, in response to like manifestation and money, right. That, you know, but then our ancestors who have been here and who know what it's like and have still healed and evolved and, you know, then like they can actually sort of bridge some of that, like expanded consciousness, everything's energy, you know, kind of wisdom with like, and here we are in these material bodies in this material earth where things are, have a certain finiteness to them. Right. Yeah. Well, all of that's so interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess oh. we were kind of dancing around and what you were last sharing, unless you have something you kind of really wanted to go on to there, but, but I'm aware of our time and sort of starting to kind of bring us down and in a little bit. And, um, and I, so I want to kind of offer you, I feel like we've kind of danced around a couple times, like what does freedom actually mean for you? And I feel like you were sort of just touching on it with some of the sovereignty and with some of the like um, choice at one point I was kind of hearing you speak to, yeah, like the choice mm-hmm. to do things and to find the discernment of like, what is right for me in this moment, in this body, you know, what am I taking from here or there? But yeah, what is, is that freedom for you or what? Yeah. What, what is freedom for you? And, Mm. and what's the possibility to a freedom, right. In this kind of like journey of being human or in these times. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I mean, we kind of, you kind of just said it. I feel like if I had to give it one word, like freedom is it's embodiment, you know, Mm. really how I see it. And embodiment leads leads to I think that's the fountain that flows to everything else Mm. when you are fully have fully landed in your body in the here and now presence and you understand that you have the autonomy and sovereignty over your body to where you can make your own decisions, Mm -hmm. your choices. And they're coming from a sound mind and they're coming from a place of, you know, kind of like having peace. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not, you're not outsourcing your healing anymore. You're not outsourcing, you know, your much of, much of anything, right? Because Mm -hmm. the answer is coming from within. Like I, Mm -hmm. I see Mm -hmm. that as freedom. When mm-hmm. I can, and when I can make my decisions fully knowing that I'm the one making the decision, and that does not mean that you don't seek counsel or you don't need a trainer, or you don't need mentors, or you don't need to listen to anyone, because then you're not really free either, in my opinion. Like mm-hmm. if you're, if you're, mm-hmm. if you can't accept feedback or anything from anyone else like is that true freedom or Mm -hmm. are you like stuck in your stuck in Mm -hmm. yourself right you can Mm -hmm. be embodiment I don't think is being stuck in your body it's Mm -hmm. being fully inside your body you know Mm -hmm. so it's just like you know that kind of that word of balance comes back in I feel like with this because you have to yeah the decisions are coming from a place of full embodiment and um, I kind of, yeah, I feel like that's the best way I can understand my own freedom and where I am finding my own freedom. And I, I see it where I see myself not being free when I can't, when I am making decisions I don't want to make. Like, why do mm-hmm. I, why am I making these decisions I don't want to mm-hmm. make? And I, and I presently can name five things like why I don't want this cookie. I just like, I feel like some kind of addiction to this <laughs> sugar. And so mm-hmm. I'm making the decision to eat it, but mm-hmm. it's not, it's not a decision that I want to make. So therefore mm-hmm. I'm not acting out of a place of freedom. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think, I think there's, you know, freedom is such a big concept and word that I'm understanding and getting to know more and more and more in my life and where I feel like um yeah I'm just kind of like tapping tapping into like I almost feel like if this is like a book that's being written like I'm very much in like the first few chapters Mm -hmm. like I just finished writing the prologue (laughs) and like we're going on to you know like okay now what does this look like you know and so yeah 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 I love that. Yeah. Thank you. 
for sharing those first chapters for you anyway. (laughs) (laughs) It is. It's Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, I feel like, I mean, like I sort of said, like we've talked about, you know, it's, it, it can mean so many different things, you know, and, and, and again, although I certainly have my opinions on some of those interpretations Mm -hmm. (laughs) and can probably be a little bit judgmental sometimes, you know, it's like also like, they're not inherently wrong. It's again, I think it's sort of one of those like so much bigger than any one word could ever Uh name. I mean, much like we were talking about with God, you know, and so you almost need this like pantheistic, like approach to freedom, you know, like it's like information and education and like knowing what your options are and like, but then it's also like embodiment so that you can be discerning. And then it's also like, relational because then it's like yeah like you said it's you know we're not free if we're in a if we're in if our ideas haven't been tested right I mean Mm -hmm. I think that's part of it too is like part of how we land in truth you know capital t or little t is like by coming to a hypothesis and then testing it against Mm -hmm. somebody or testing it in real world situations and then finding out does it hold up or am I like realizing I need to actually shift my understanding of that or like Mm -hmm. oh it's different than what I used to think it was and it got me different results but I'm still not sure it's getting me the results that like I actually want to get so it's progress but it's not like a rival you know and um yeah and I feel like we kind of have to do that with yeah with freedom with anything you know right right yeah. And I think like kind of to that progress and that arrival thing, like I, I think a free mind understands that you may never arrive. Mm-hmm. Like the, that arrival is not the goal, like, mm-hmm. because we're still, every things will always change. So you're, we're, you're, you become stuck again or not free when you have an expectation for something to go a certain way and like land in a certain Mm -hmm. area Mm -hmm. and it and if it doesn't then what right Mm -hmm. like you you can't if you if you hold if you're holding too close to like a certain Mm -hmm. expectation like you can never be free Mm -hmm. because this is not the way life works (laughs) like Mm -hmm. life will always have something different to hand you and so perspective I think has so much to do with freedom too like What's your perspective yeah. on, on something that may have happened in your life? Um, yeah. Like, where are you finding your freedom? And that's kind of, you know, something that I've marinated a lot too, was just like working in the birth world is like, yeah. especially like so many women, you know, you're going into your birth with a certain idea or expectation, or you want something to go a certain way. Mm-hmm. And it's, I think the process of birth is one of the biggest things that we do to relinquish our control birth and death yeah yeah (laughs) they're all all, exactly we have no control yeah you can like you can make choices that modify you know maybe the outcome or that might like lead to a certain outcome but at the end of the day Mm -hmm. we're literally surrendering it's it's all about surrender so yeah that's another thing freedom is surrender freedom is surrender you Mm. know it is Mm. it is the sweetest surrender um because you 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 give it to spirit knowing that no matter the outcome you'll be okay like you'll keep you're just gonna keep you're gonna keep going yeah and Ooh, just brought tears that like totally I'm like oh yeah that there's like some things coming up in my life right now that I'm like sitting with and kind of feeling into and exploring and just yeah and I was like oh yeah that's what that is it's like another layer of like looking for freedom and yeah. and this one is freedom through surrender it's, mm. Mm, yeah mm-hmm. freedom through surrender wow yeah I'm getting a lot of chills right now because yeah there's Freedom through anything, right? Freedom through birth, death, surrender, trust. Yeah. You know, whatever wholeness. it is, wholeness, you know. Mm-hmm. Um mm. it's yeah. Hmm. I'm trying to think if there's yeah, something to sit in because 
it's so easy to find yourself trapped or feeling Mm -hmm. stuck or not Mm -hmm. not not feeling awakened Mm -hmm. to how free we really are Mm -hmm. and that's like the human experience and that's when that's when something like story medicine or any type of medicine plant medicine love medicine relationship medicine these things that are meant to heal us come into practice like we 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 bring those things into practice when we're not feeling free Mm -hmm. and that's how we find healing Mm -hmm. and so when I look at you know certain systems like I said I have a nuanced relationship with a lot of things but like Mm -hmm. when I look at a lot of the allopathic framework when it comes to medicine it's very much like problem diagnosis Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. done holistic healing understand the cycle and the give and the take and the need to do it again the need to do it again like it's not like you're just healed because you took a Tylenol Mm -hmm. like you're because there's so many layers to it there's the physical there's the mental there's the emotional there's the spiritual and so the cycles go through on each of those layers sometimes or you know whatever yeah yeah Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. (laughs) beautiful what an amazing conversation. This was not yeah, necessarily the conversation I, I, I was thinking we were going to have, but I didn't was. either. I didn't either. <laughs> I think that little meditation kind of like brought out what was coming because I mm. had no clue that this is where we would go. But yeah, it feels yeah. good. Speaking of freedom, right? Right. <laughs> freedom to have the conversation that's there that day. <laughs> right. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Beautiful. Oh. Well, yeah. So, how can people find you or what? Yeah. Do you have anything you want to share about your offering? in the world your work in the world and sure you know. yeah yeah so and- I um I'm on Instagram as Stella's Freedom Story um I also my birth keeping business is Freedom Birth Story <laughs> so freedom is really present right now yeah. right um <laughs> but yeah I've I have been on a little bit of a hiatus trying to form and shape where where freedom birth story is going Mm. um trying to call in some mothers that I can be present with in their birth journey and perhaps the 10 birth and um Mm. document photograph that experience and so definitely calling that in right now and just you know allowing it to unfold as it as it's choosing to but yeah that's how you can find find me online freedombirthstory.com as well as the website that where you found some of my words that is updated but maybe by the time this airs I'll update (laughs) that'll be my goal this is I always do that I'm always yeah (laughs) I know I always am like yeah my website and I'm like I don't know that it's the most current iteration of right, me. It's right. like the six months ago iteration of me. I'm pretty sure I haven't touched it since I actually gave birth myself. So I should probably put some things about that in there. Yeah, like, I know what I'm talking about. I really do. This stuff is awesome. Birth is, <laughs> birth is amazing. I've actually done it now. Yeah. Uh, you know, imposter syndrome often comes mm-hmm. up where you're mm-hmm. like, do I have it to talk about this? And it's like, mm-hmm. if it's on your heart and it's there and it's real and it's truth, then yeah, like go mm-hmm. for it. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. I know. Easier said than done sometimes. <laughs> right. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, I'll have your website and your Instagrams on, uh, on the show notes and, um, yeah. So is there anything, any final, things you want to share or any final words that feel like they want to kind of be spoken into the space to, mm. as we close out for today, anyway, <laughs> this actually just came to mind as you asked me that. And I was speaking to a friend the other day, who's really going through a lot right now in her life. And she was saying like, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I can do this. Mm. And the only thing that came to mind is like, but you are already doing it like it's not a matter of can you do it like you are doing it if you're mm-hmm. here and there's breath in your lungs you're doing it and so I don't know if that serves as any encouragement to anyone that's listening right now mm-hmm. but like you you are it's like it's it's actually already done right mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> as you were saying that it even got me thinking about that in terms of freedom right mm-hmm. and like even in the moments where we feel unfree it's like 
as long as we choose, even if what we're choosing, we know isn't what we want for ourselves long-term. Like if Mm -hmm. we choose what's right in front of us, like then we, you know, or yeah, if we breathe in and breathe out, like yeah, you're operating. Maybe freedom is breath. Freedom. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like you're operating in freedom so long as you're making a conscious decision that's yours. Yeah. And so I don't know if I can do this is very real. It's a really very real mm-hmm. feeling and statement. But if you choose that you are doing it and you can, like that's where you're operating in freedom. It's a choice. Mm-hmm. It's a choice. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love it. Thank you. Uh, well, thank you. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I'm so, you know, the way we've stumbled into each other is crazy, yeah. but I just I really enjoyed talking to you and getting deep. I really did feel like I was at a fire at some mm-hmm. points in this because this is where it goes, right? When you right. just when you can just kick it and talk about the deepest thing. So thank you for, yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Thank you, Stella. <laughs> yeah. I really, yeah. I just, I feel the, the heart and the, the awe and the curiosity and the wonder and the, the fire that you bring to the fire. And so mm. thank you for bringing all of that. So yeah. it, um, yeah, I always leave these just feeling really touched. And so, yeah, I really appreciate it. Yeah. Mm. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. So we'll invite everybody listening to just take a few deep breaths in and out as we just release our fire today, just letting our conversation trickle in and land. And what's one way in which in this moment right now you are already and always will be, already have been, always will be free. so with that thank you everybody Mm -hmm. until next time (laughs) thanks Stella thank you hi Kate here again thank you for gathering with us whether you've been here a while or found your way here thanks to today's guest it means so much to me and the world I dream of to have you here I hope you'll tune in for more of our conversations We humans seem to be at a profound threshold and facing questions of deep impact for the future and the world. We need our full hearts and humanity as we sow seeds of change in these times of joy and heartbreak. I count myself lucky to be here now, around this virtual village fire, weaving our stories into a medicine with humans like you. As a community medicine space, this podcast is relational. It weaves webs of connection and mutual respect and care across time and space. If you appreciate and support the future we're seeding here, you can support the weaving of this web in a few ways. One, share episodes with friends and family or online with your community. It also helps the podcast immensely if you like, rate, subscribe to, or follow the podcast where you watch or listen, so you get notified when new episodes drop and new listeners find us as they search. Two, join us on Patreon. Doing so supports conversations like the one you just heard and allows you access to live community gatherings and medicine circles and more as we continue to grow. It also helps me keep this space advertisement free so the conversations stay intact as they are. If you have questions, suggestions, connections, or would like to find out more about working with me, you can find me online at www.wildsacredjourney.com, on Instagram at wildsacredjourney underscore kp, or email me, kate at wildsacredjourney.com. Until next time, from my heart to yours, I release today's fire with a prayer for our individual and collective wholeness, connection, and joy. May it be so.